I call this meeting of the House Housing Committee to order. Uh, first order of business, Representative Johnson, would you approve, uh, make a motion for the approval of the minutes? I reviewed them and they look good. I'll make that motion. Yeah. Thank you, Representative Johnson. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And the minutes are approved. Uh, so today, uh, this is the rollout and public testimony for House File 2335. Um, we will start with Chair Howard, who will introduce the bill and um, walk through the bill, and then we will move on to our signed up testifiers. Um, I'll repeat this again, but for right now, we do have 20 people signed up to testify, so we will have a two minute time limit on testimony. Um, and so I uh, implore you to keep your uh, comments succinct and brief. So uh, we'll start with Chair Howard. Chair Howard, would you like to move your bill? And then I also see you have a DE2 amendment. Yes, Chair Bajay, I would move my bill and the delete all amendment. All right, Chair Howard uh, mo moves his bill uh, 2335 as well as the DE2 amendment. So Chair Howard to the bill, or did I No, to the bill as, as amended. Thank you, Chair Bajay and members of the committee. I am thrilled uh, to present House File 2335, our Omnibus Housing Finance and Policy Bill. Um, I want to start with a few thank yous. I specifically want to thank you, Chair Bajay, and I also want to thank our Minority Lead, Representative Johnson, and all the members of our committee. I truly believe that the bills and the discussion uh, are all committee long has the, produced the product of what is a strong bill. Uh, I want to thank our CA, Adam Kopel, and CLA, Abdullahi Abdullahi, as well as our nonpartisan staff, Justin Cope, Mary Davis, and Joe Harney, our partisan researchers, Molly Peterson and Lori Cousineau, and our committee page, Cassie Soar. Um, this is the product in many ways of our work together. And the product of our work here is the most comprehensive bill to address our affordable housing crisis that this legislature has ever considered, as it should be. Uh, because Minnesotans have never faced an affordable housing crisis like this, a crisis that's deepening, worsening, and challenging families and communities like never before. With the historic surplus, we are seizing a historic opportunity to make $1 billion in investments in housing across the housing continuum. With it, we will build more homes to rent and to own, create housing stability for families who are on the brink of homelessness, and create pathways to home ownership and generational wealth for thousands of new Minnesotans. This is a new day in our collective work to create a future where every Minnesotan has access to affordable housing. And yet it's just the start. So I want to highlight a few uh, key areas of our bill and then I'll kind of walk through uh, the spreadsheet in more greater detail. Uh, but first, with this investment, we're going to build a heck of a lot of homes. Uh, that's been something that I think our committee has discussed in great detail, the need uh, to address what is a significant supply and demand mismatch, both in terms of uh, affordable homes to own and uh, affordable homes to rent. And so we, through housing infrastructure bonds, the challenge programs, and, and an array of other tools, we'll be able to create thousands of new units of housing. And these investments are strategic in that they'll leverage uh, for-profit, non-profit, and public resources to begin to meet uh, this demand across the state. And what I'd say is these are cr critical but for investments. Um, but for uh, the public investment we are making, we wouldn't be able to you know, build the deeply affordable rental using housing or workforce housing in greater Minnesota or the new affordable homes to own. Without these public investments, these units would not be built and that's why it's so important we're gonna emphasize the production of new homes in this bill. Uh, we're also going to preserve the affordable homes we already have with our state's first significant investment to preserve naturally occurring affordable housing. Uh, this is vital. It's an issue we've heard about for years. And with our $150 million investment, we're going to preserve nearly 4,000 affordable homes. Uh, it's, it's transformational to be able to move this forward. Three, uh, we are proposing our state's most ambitious agenda ever to create new pathways into home ownership. Uh, an issue we've heard a lot about this year. Uh, Representative Hassan's home ownership production bill, as well as several others, uh, will provide well north of $100 million, um, w several hundred million dollars in investment to produce new affordable homes. Uh, along with Representative Hassan's bill, housing infrastructure bonds, the challenge program, 
HECAT, the local housing trust funds, and other programs will be able to help us create more single family homes that are affordable to meet the need. In addition, we're gonna create more homeowners. Uh, House File 12, Vice Chair Agbaje's first generation down payment assistance is an innovative and uh, leading way to create more home ownership, uh, more homeowners, more than 4,000 new first generation homeowners uh, as a result of our significant investment in this bill. And these home ownership investments, uh, these big time investments will pay big time dividends in our work to narrow our racial gaps in home ownership. Uh, we're also beginning our work to end children's homelessness and ensure families have the housing stability they need. Uh, this bill includes resources uh, to meet our statewide needs of our families who are on the brink of homelessness uh, and to create housing stability through state-based housing vouchers through the Bring It Home bill. Nowhere near the full-time need, but we begin down that path and this bill will create an estimated 6,000 vouchers over the next four years for families. Uh, and this it will be life-changing, helping those families succeed and creating a ripple of benefits uh, for folks by creating housing stability where it is not present otherwise. Uh, uh, I also want to mention that we're addressing the unique challenges all across the state. I think that's been something that's been reiterated over and over again, that every community in our state is facing a housing crisis, but those challenges look differently, and this bill reflects that. Uh, we have significant investments in Greater Minnesota Workforce Housing. Uh, as an example, in Greater Minnesota, with support for HIBs and Challenge to support those needs as well, and uh, specific resources to address things like deeply affordable housing need in, in, in the metro area or in suburban areas. This bill uh, addresses the spectrum of needs all across the state and with significant resources to back it up. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to mention that we're focusing on the long-term needs. This bill does include a billion dollars in one-time investments, but we're not gonna solve our housing crisis with one-time resources. By establishing uh, the quarter cent metro-wide sales tax in this bill, we're also bringing in the new revenue that is desperately needed to address this challenge in the long-term. Uh, this is truly a bill that takes a yes and approach. Building new homes to rent and to own focusing on our greater Minnesota and metro area housing crisis challenges, leveraging nonprofit and for-profit housing development, investing in proven programs and innovating with new ones, one-time infusion of resources and long-term investments to meet the needs. This is what the moment calls for, and that's what the bill will do. In closing, before I walk through the spreadsheet, I wanted to mention, you know, I've been watching a, a lot of basketball recently. It's March Madness season. Um, <laughs> And you know, if you're, if you're down by 20 points at halftime, there isn't a 20 point shot that you can hit uh, to, to wipe away that deficit. Um, and that's kind of, I, I think about that in the context of decades of disinvestment in housing. Uh, we're not gonna be able uh, to solve our housing crisis in one shot. There's not a 20 point shot before us. Uh, but with this bill, the momentum is gonna shift. We're gonna put on the full court press and make the kinds of investments we need now and into the future and begin our work to create a state where Minnesota or every Minnesotan has access to an affordable home. And with that, I'm done with my basketball analogies <laughs> and uh, we'll walk through uh, the spreadsheet in a little more detail. Uh, Thank you, Chair Howard. Um, I'll turn it over to House Research to... Ch Chair, I'll, I'll walk through it. Oh, you're going to walk through it. Okay, yeah. Chair Howard, go ahead and walk through the bill. So for, for members, if you pull out your spreadsheet, um, the column that I would, uh, I'm going to be mostly focusing on is the H column. Uh, I'll read off the programs and the investment in the H column. These are largely one-time investments where we have ongoing TAILS investments. I'll call that out as well. Um, so starting at the top, uh, we are going to be investing $50 million uh, in housing, in the housing challenge program, 40 million in the greater Minnesota workforce housing development program. Uh, we'll be uh, providing 8.7 million for local housing trust fund, trust fund, that's a representative of Brandville, House File 950. Uh, we'll be making a $35 million investment in manufactured housing, that's House File 814, a representative of Norris Bill. In that area, we're focusing on the revolving loan uh, piece and also lending grants. Uh, we're making an $80 million investment in, ho in home ownership investment grants. That's representative Hassan's 1472. 
Uh, moving down to the next column that has new funding is the Bridges Program, Representative Norris's bill, House File 1696. Um, next, uh, we, we're making a total investment of $125 million in FHPAP. I'll note that that $125 uh, that's in the spreadsheet includes the $50 million that we passed and sent to the governor for his signature. Uh, which should be signed uh, very soon. That was passed in the Senate just yesterday. Uh, we include uh, $100 million in one-time dollars for Bring It Home for rental assistance. And we also include $24 million in the tails. We hope to spread this money out over those four years, uh, providing uh, specifically with this tranche of resources, state-based vouchers in outside of the seven county metro area. You may remember we discussed uh, the metro-wide sales tax on Friday. Uh, we would dedicate a similar amount of resources on an ongoing basis to vouchers uh, inside the seven county metro area using that dedicated resource. In this way, we're able to provide uh, over 6,000 vouchers statewide to families um, who uh, currently qualify for Section 8 uh, but aren't receiving one. Uh, we include $5 million for the strengthening the supportive housing model, a priority of the governor. Uh, moving down to our home ownership assistance resources, we include $150 million in House File 12, our first generation down payment assistance program of Vice uh, Chair Agbaje, as well as $2 million for Build Wealth, by, uh, uh, Vice Chair Agbaje bill. We include $10 million. Uh, for fee-based home purchasing program. That's a Representative Hassan bill that uh, Representative Noor has also worked on and presented in front of the committee. Uh, moving down to some of the preservation items, we include Representative Noor's high-rise sprinkler grant program at $10 million and uh, our state's first ever investment in NOAA with House File 1412, the NOAA Impact Fund at $150 million. Uh, moving down to uh, our resident organization support uh, group. We have HECAT, or the Home Buyer Education Counseling and Training Program, Representative Kozlowski's bill at $2 million. We have uh, the, the capacity building grants to support organizations doing important work, a, a governor priority at $8 million. Uh, uh, the other piece of build wealth at, at 500000 Land uh, Representative Fishers, Lead Safe Homes, 1507 at 4 million. Representative Norris's Land uh, Lord Risk Mitigation uh, at 500,000. Vice Chair Baje's House File 1215 Housing Mediation Grant Program at uh, 1.5 million. Uh, House File 2344, Representative Liz Lagarde's Northland Initiative uh, fund funding. I'll note this says 1 million on the spreadsheet. It is 2 million in the language, and uh, that'll be reflected tomorrow uh, in the, uh, um, the materials that we present. Um, we have 300,000 for the delivery of the emergency, emergency rental assistance task force. I'll spend a little bit of time on this. Um, you, members might remember we heard a bill uh, that dealt with uh, a policy bill, uh, Representative Press Vegas bill that dealt with if you cannot bring forward an eviction while there's a pending rental assistance application. As part of that bill, we heard one of the pieces that the speed and the delivery of rental assistance uh, is something that varies and is often taking too long. Um, we think it's important to, to study this and try to bring a group of stakeholders together to kind of solve for this. If we can solve for the delivery of rental assistance faster, that's something that's going to work better for landlords and better for renters. Um, and it's, uh, so we include some study language for that in this bill. Uh, House File 2632, the Stable Housing Organization Relief Fund is Representative Hussein's bill. That is in at $10 million. I'm going to flip the page for those that have it on here. Um, and I'm going to move down to what's listed in the, under the deed category, although um, we we'll have, might have an amendment uh, tomorrow to, to bring this under Minnesota Housing Finance. Um, this would create a greater Minnesota Housing Infrastructure Grant Program. It was part of House File 73 of Representative Norris to help address the infrastructure uh, needs, especially in greater Minnesota with housing development. Uh, and then the last section I'll highlight is housing infrastructure bonds. A tried and true tool 
uh, to address uh, the range of housing needs. And we include $200 million in cash um, to do housing infrastructure bonds. We also include the debt service and the tails to do an additional 200 million of housing infrastructure bonds. Um, that is the, the high notes of the funding pieces. We do have a, a few limited policy items in the bill, but this is largely a funding bill. Um, folks will notice, note that we already have a, an omnibus renters rights bill moving um, and next year is a policy uh, year as well. And so it would expect this committee to do even more policy work uh, next year for items that didn't make it across this year. Um, with that, I'd be happy to turn it over to our testifiers. Thank you, Chair Howard. Um, I'll just reiterate again, we have a large list of folks we'll be using, uh, giving everyone about two minutes. I would like not to cut you off, but I will gently remind you about your ending time limit. Um, so with that, we'll start with uh, Ryan Baumtrog, Assistant Commissioner, Minnesota Housing Finance Agency, and then uh, Commissioner Marion Green will be on deck. <laughs> Welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself and proceed with your testimony. Great. Thanks, uh, Chair Baje. My name is Ryan Baumtrog. I'm the Assistant Commissioner <laughs> for Policy and Community Development at Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. The Commissioner is out in uh, Washington, D.C. today, so she sends uh, her regards. So I'll be brief um, just to say um, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to testify and what a historic opportunity uh, this is to make the largest investment in, in housing that the state has made. So the administration is really excited about this opportunity. Uh, the things that I'll name um, as the chair went through the bill where there's some significant overlap with uh, the governor's recommendations are in uh, community stabilization and NOAA, greater Minnesota workforce housing, uh, first generation home buyers program, uh, housing infrastructure cash and debt, as well as the Family Homelessness Prevention and Assistance Program. So we really appreciate the focus on those programs uh, and the opportunities that they'll bring to preserve housing and, and help uh, first-time home buyers. Uh, additionally, as Chair Howard just mentioned, uh, we appreciate some of the policy and technical language that is included in this bill. Uh, the agency looks at our statutes and how our programs are working or not working and want to make changes to help those programs be more effective each year. So we appreciate the inclusion uh, of, those, of those policy changes. I did want to mention, you know, there are a number of governor's recommendations that are not included in the bill that we hope to have a continued conversation about, notably workforce and affordable home ownership uh, production program that's about increasing the supply for homes, uh, first time home buyers and construction out in greater Minnesota. Uh, and then homework starts with home. Uh, we would like to expand that program and really target homeless uh, students and their families <coughs> across the state. Uh, overall, uh, one uh, concern for the agency is that it does uh, create 15 new programs for the agency to administer, largely with uh, one-time resources, and that's uh, a significant effort uh, for the agency to stand up that many programs uh, across the, the breadth of the issues. So we'd like to continue to work uh, with Chair Howard and stakeholders to better understand how we could either modify our existing program <coughs> or add to the programs that we have, like the Challenge Program and the Workforce Affordable Home Ownership Program, to meet the needs that stakeholders and people across the state are feeling. Uh, so with you that, I'll just say uh, we, we look forward to, to working with you on this bill throughout the, the rest of session. Thanks for the time. Thank you so much. Uh, next is Commissioner Marion Green from Hennepin County, and uh, on deck will be Mayor Jacob Fry. Oh, Chair Badgie, I'm just wondering if the uh, Deputy Commissioner is going to be around later or back on uh, tomorrow afternoons, because I do have questions for yes. the, either Deputy Commissioner or the Commissioner. Yes, um, I believe we can make that happen. We'll do member questions tomorrow, so we'll make sure that the administration is here for questions. Thank you, Representative Johnson. Thank you, Commissioner Green. Welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself and proceed with your testimony. Um, thank you, Chair Abadje, Chair Howard, and members of the committee. My name is Marion Green. I am the Hennepin County Commissioner for District 3. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Hennepin County has the largest share of cost burden households in Minnesota. These households are disproportionately black, indigenous, and other households of color. There are currently 63,000 households paying more than 50% of their income towards housing and a mere 19,000 units of affordable housing available. The numbers don't add up. 
The county is also home to 31% of the state's renters, including 48% of the state's black renters. Since the end of the statewide emergency rental assistance program, Hennepin County alone has seen the number of families entering our shelter system outpace the number of families exiting the shelter system at the ratio of two to one. These numbers are very current numbers. And as you may know, the county has a commitment to shelter all uh, of our families. So as a result, just last week, the board had to approve an additional $17 million in local funds to support shelter operations for 2023. We did not do this lightly. I cannot stress enough the urgency of this moment or the need for state partnership to build more housing and support shelter services. We are experiencing a severe lack of affordable housing. Specifically to this bill, Hennepin County strongly supports the significant investment this bill makes to keep people in their homes and to build and preserve a housing at all levels of affordability, but especially targeted to those that face the greatest barriers. We're excited to see the Bring It Home Rental Assistance Program to support our disabled, homeless, and otherwise marginalized community members and the Family Homelessness Prevention Funding for those at greatest risk of homelessness. Thank you for the strong investment in the First Generation Home Buyers Assistance Program, which would support about 5,000 first generation home buyers and begin to bandage the state's history of housing discrimination. Hennepin County is in urgent need and we are ready. As I testified to you last week, our Housing and Redevelopment Authority a funding for affordable multifamily rental projects is oversubscribed at a rate of four to one. That's three, 34 million applications with only 8 million available to help. Um, Hennepin County is dedicated to addressing affordable housing and we're well positioned to deliver the funds needed to build and preserve deeply affordable homes. The Metro housing sales tax is especially critical to providing ongoing funding to meet our housing crisis. Thank you so much for your testimony, Commissioner. And that <laughs> brings my remarks to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, next up we have uh, Mayor, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry, and then on deck will be Michael Dahl from Homes for All. Welcome to the committee. Uh, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, Chair Howard, my name is Jacob Fry. I'm the mayor of Minneapolis, and I'm proud to be here to testify before all of you committee members in favor of HF 2335. This investment is a critical one to our city. Uh, we have dramatically increased funding uh, to affordable housing, resulting in about five times the amount of, of low-income housing, deeply affordable, that we were previous able to, previously able to produce, and still it's not enough. Uh, and so some of the key provisions that are in this bill uh, would dramatically help us increase uh, that deeply affordable housing uh, and help us really reduce the chronic homelessness, which was on the way uh, out as of 2019, 2020, and then in the last couple of years has increased substantially with the pandemic uh, as, as well as some of the other restrictions being lifted. Uh, so specifically, I, I wanna thank you for your quick action uh, to move already on the $50 million in emergency rental funds. Uh, after years of decreases, we are seeing family homelessness rise uh, and this funding could make a huge difference there. Uh, also want to thank you for the $100 million in housing infrastructure bonds. Uh, these bonds, along with the support for uh, local trust funds, allow us to increase the production of already uh, deeply affordable housing that we have in our city. Uh, I want to thank you for the, the Lead Safe Homes. Uh, this is a program uh, that, that, that provides both, both funding uh, as well as assistance uh, for Lead Safe Home grant programs. In Minneapolis, we have a goal of of getting rid of childhood lead poisoning uh, and being the first city in the country to do so, but still we have a lot of work left to go specifically in our low income and BIPOC neighborhoods. Uh, and then uh, finally, I, I wanna thank you also for the lower, uh, to allow for longer affordability periods. Uh, presently, a lot of our affordable housing stock is affordable only for a period of 20 to 25 years. Uh, this would allow us to require that that same housing is affordable <coughs> for longer than 30. Um, the one big piece that, that I wanted to mention that is not presently in this bill is public housing. I've previously testified, I believe before this committee before, uh, for the $45 million that would go towards 
uh, public housing and specifically our scattered site uh, maintenance and operations, that is going to be a really critical piece to make sure that the public housing stock that we have in our city doesn't continue to deteriorate. I believe this is a problem that's not going away. Uh, overall, so appreciate your work. This is a huge investment and I appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, appreciate it. Uh, next we have Michael Dahl and then uh, on deck will be Libby Murphy from Minnesota Housing Partnership. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Chair Gabadji, Chair Howard, um, and committee members. Um, my name is Michael Dahl and I'm a public, the public policy director with Homeline and a public uh, policy team co-chair with Homes for All Coalition. The coalition is over 270 organizations across the state that address issues throughout through homelessness to the throughout the homeless. I'm breaking up here. We do street outreach to home ownership, the full continuum, and I'm testifying on behalf of Homes for All to support um, House File 2335 as it provides significant funding across the continuum. The bill allocates substantial funds to build more housing. It devotes resources to preserving and acquiring existing affordable housing. We also support the affordable housing, the, the uh, span of affordable, uh, existing affordable housing. We also support uh, affordable home ownership opportunities in the bill. Crucial funding to struggling renters to stay housed through rental assistance and homeless prevention is also greatly appreciated. And last, um, and then we also support matching grants to local housing trust funds funding the, for lead safe homes, as well as a landlord mitigation proposal. Homes for All also supports the bill's incorporation of general obligation bonds for public housing, as well as HIVs. On the positive, uh, lastly on the positive side, we want to appreciate the effort to partially fund the Bring It Home Rental Assistance proposal. While Homes for All has not had the time to consult with our membership about the metro-wide sales tax, Homes for All agenda includes a constitutional amendment proposed asking for a statewide sales tax the tax, sales tax increase to provide ongoing funding for Minnesota's long-term housing rental and rental assistance needs. One, er, one piece of advice. We ask that every effort be made to address greater Minnesota's rental assistance and housing needs. With the metro-wide sales tax, the proposal attention to geographic equity is a must. That said, House File 2335 is historic and transformative and shows a genuine commitment to meeting the housing needs of Minnesota, Minnesotans and communities across the state. We thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next up we have Libby Murphy and then next on deck will be Kelly Law from the Metropolitan Consortium of Community Developers. Welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself and proceed with your testimony. Hi, my name is Libby Murphy. I'm the Director of Policy of the Minnesota Housing Partnership. Uh, chair, members of the committee, thank you for this opportunity. House File 2335 is a comprehensive funding bill. It invests in new production and preservation of rental homes, manufactured homes, and single family homes. It increases housing access and opportunity through rental assistance and down payment assistance and prevents housing instability and homelessness. Um, home is the foundation. Individuals and families thrive in safe, healthy, and affordable homes. And our state prospers when Minnesotans do well. Where you call home affects nearly everything about your life. Um, it affects where you work, your social and support network, your access to good schools and healthy food, and it impacts your health. House File 2335 is an investment in Minnesota's most important asset, its people and their well-being. The shortage of homes and lack of affordability perpetuates inequality in a state that has embarrassing disparities in home ownership, housing cost burden, and among those experiencing homelessness. This is an investment that will reduce disparities in housing, wealth, health and education. Minnesota desperately needs more housing and cannot afford to lose the affordable housing it has. The bill's investments in housing infrastructure bonds, the Challenge Fund, Greater Minnesota Workforce Housing Program are all examples of programs that will increase the supply of housing. The need is especially great for households with the lowest incomes. Housing infrastructure bonds are critical to addressing this gap and the investments in the Bring It Home Rental Assistance Program will complement these investments. Um, uh, the investments in NOAA will keep people stably housed, it will improve the condition of homes, and, will, and it is an investment in community. Um, we su appreciate the investments in local housing trust funds as this supports community-driven solutions, and the capacity building investments will help support uh, these local efforts um, by ensuring uh, communities have access to resources to support their needs. Um, 
I want to call out we wish that there was a greater investment in the Stable Housing Alliance for Equity for Recovery and Equity to support our mission driven housing providers. And lastly, um, as I testified last week, MHP also supports the metro wide sales tax. A minimal tax increase would have a meaningful impact on people's ability to afford their home. It could mean the difference between a household experiencing severe cost burden and a household being able to afford their housing. In the Twin Cities, renter cost burden increased from 36 to 45 percent between 2000 and 2019. The Twin Cities also has the largest home ownership gap in the state. Um, only 7 percent of new units from 2010 to 2018 were affordable to households at 30 percent of area median income. Um, wrap up. Okay. So we, we support the proposed dedicated revenue and look forward to continuing the conversation for a statewide solution. Thank you for your testimony. Next up we have Kelly Law and then following uh, Kelly Law will be Teresa Delata. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Chair Baje, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you again today. My name is Kelly Law and I'm a policy and field building advisor with the Metropolitan Consortium of Community Developers. So I am here in today in strong support of the House Housing Omnibus Budget <coughs> and Policy Bill. The investments and policy changes included in this budget represent a solution that matches the scope of the housing crisis. By authorizing $200 million in cash for housing infrastructure bonds this biennium, we have taken a meaningful step towards addressing Minnesota's lack of affordable housing supply. Ongoing investments provide a signal to affordable housing developers that the funding is available and ready to prepare and plan in order to meet our state's increasing demand for more affordable housing. The policy changes also included with this investment will ensure that families across the continuum of needs will have housing that is affordable to them. MCCD also supports the inclusion of funding for down payment assistance, home buyer education counseling and the training program, emergency rental assistance, and the Stable Housing Organization Relief Program. These programs are absolutely critical to addressing the full spectrum of Minnesota's housing needs. There is no one solution that will meet the needs of all Minnesotans, and we applaud the diversity of, of approaches included in this budget. MCCD is also a member of the Minnesota CDFI Coalition, and we appreciate the, the inclusion of the Home Ownership Investment Grant Program. This program will allow CDFI, CDFIs to continue to supply historically underserved and underrepresented populations at a higher rate than the private market and will increase the supply of affordable homeownership opportunities. Um, thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you to Chair Howard for carrying this historic bill and we appreciate all of your hard work this session. Thank you for your testimony. Next up we have Teresa Delata, and then um, after Teresa will be Sue Watlove Phillips. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Vice Chair and committee members. My name is Teresa Delata, and I am uh, a leader with Deacon Interfaith Housing Collaborative, and I've lived in my South Minneapolis apartment since August of 2015. I'm here to testify for House File 2335. I believe that we need to urgently create a rental assistance program as envisioned by the Bring It Home Minnesota campaign. We must ensure that everyone in the state has the rent support they deserve. This bill is a good step forward to this goal, and I know this because I am one of these Minnesotans. I pay over 70% of my income each month towards my rent. Before that, I was sleeping in someone's basement. Before that, I was also paying market rate and sharing an apartment with roommates and still paying over 70% of my income towards rent. I first became eligible for a federal Section 8 choice voucher back in 2005 when I was discharged from the hospital to my car. But the wait list to apply for a federal voucher in Minneapolis was not open to apply to. In March of 2019, 14 years of waiting and trying, I finally got on the wait list for a Section 8 choice voucher. 14 years. And you know what the real kicker is? I called in October of 2021, and the person on the phone told me they were just issuing vouchers to people who got on the wait list in 2008. That means I still have over a decade before I will actually have the federal choice voucher that I qualify for right now. I'm permanently disabled. I work part-time to be able to barely survive every month. 
and I am not alone. My story is similar to stories of hundreds of thousands of families, individuals, and seniors sitting on the edge waiting for their voucher. I support the new rental assistance in this bill. I support us all having to pay a little more sales tax to create a voucher program. And again, I ask for you to please pass House File 2335, and not just for me, but for all those that are struggling. As Paul Wellstone said, we all do better when we all do better. House File 2335 can help us do better. Don't we all deserve affordable, safe housing? Don't we all deserve better? Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Delato. Next, we have Sue Watlow Phillips uh, from the Metropolitan Interfaith Council on Affordable Housing, and following will be Joel Hansen from the North Country Cooperative Foundation. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members and Chair Howard. It is a blessing to be here with you today and to see this historic bill moving forward. As you heard in testimony from me before, uh, Sue Watlow Phillips, uh, Executive Director of MICA, the Metropolitan Interfaith Council on Affordable Housing, also past president of the National Coalition, been working on this issue for over 55 years and experienced homelessness myself 50 years ago. And this is the most historic bill that we have ever seen here in the state of Minnesota in the investment in the entire continuum to housing. This is the most balanced uh, budget we've ever seen in the entire continuum of housing from prevention to shelter to transitional housing to supportive housing to permanent housing and to address the disparity that we have in home ownership in a very significant way, something that MICA has worked on for many, many years. And so we greatly appreciate that. Uh, the bill that you know that I'm here to testify on is the Lead Safe Home Bill. Um, we do not want our kids to be um, the testers uh, by becoming poisoned by <coughs> lead safe, uh, by lead paint. And so we are very, very supportive of the four a million that you have in the in the bill to continue to move forward to make sure that all of our children in Minnesota are safe um, from uh, being poisoned by lead and having their brains damaged. So on behalf of the hundreds of children that will not be poisoned by lead paint, as well as Tysia, Tyrone, Dustin, and Logan, the bill is named after Dustin Luke Shield. He is poisoned and permanently disabled by lead paint. I thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next is Joel Hansen, and following will be Paul Eager from Minnesota Realtors. Members of the committee, thank you. My name is Joel Hansen. I am the Advocacy and Communications Manager for North Country uh, Cooperative Foundation. As you know by now, uh, NCF is a nonprofit that assists manufactured homeowners in purchasing their communities and transforming them into cooperative ownership. And we'd like to thank Chair Howard. Um, for including components of Representative Norris's uh, House File 814, uh, specifically uh, Article 2, Sections 14 and 15 of the DE, uh, incorporate $25 million for manufactured home lending grants and $10 million for the creation of a manufactured housing acquisition fund. Um, these two new innovative programs um, utilize one-time funding to help round out the manufactured housing toolbox in Minnesota and create new homeowners in our state. Um, additionally, both of these programs will likely leverage outside private capital, thereby making the state's investment go even further, providing a true bang for the buck. Um, while NCF uh, also advocated for uh, other components of uh, House File 814 to be included, we understand the difficulty of budget targets and balancing priorities. So again, I just want to thank uh, the members of the committee, Chair Howard, Representative Norris, and uh, appreciate your inclusion of uh, House File 814. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next up is Paul Eager, and following will be Ania McDonald from Metro Cities, Minnesota. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Paul Eager, and I'm Senior Vice President of Governmental Affairs for the Minnesota Realtors Association. We have uh, over 22,000 members working with buyers and sellers all around the state every day. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today on the chair's amendment to House File 2335. And we'd just like to um, share our appreciation for the inclusion of provisions in the amendment that help more Minnesotans achieve home ownership. We'd especially like to thank you, Chair Howard, for including $150 million for the first generation home buyers down payment assistance fund. And Madam Chair, we'd also like to thank you for your important leadership on this issue, not just this year, but over the past couple of years. Um, you've really elevated this discussion 
uh, around the importance of down payment assistance as an important tool that can really um, address the home ownership gap in Minnesota. So thank you for your work. Minnesota Realtors is proud to be one of the organizations along with the Minnesota Home Ownership Center and Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity that has been working on this initiative for the past couple of years. And this initiative has also attracted support from a diverse and growing list of organizations that includes other nonprofits, local units of government, businesses and business trade associations. With the state's historic budget surplus and the target for this committee, this is an important opportunity for making a significant investment of one-time resources and down payment assistance that will lead to more first-generation home buyers, particularly households of color, being able to overcome the barrier presented by a lack of capital for a down payment. We'd also, uh, uh, Chair Howard, uh, share our appreciation for the thoughtful legislative task force on expediting rental assistance proposal in the bill, focusing on the improvements that could be made to issuing rental assistance, especially emergency rental assistance more efficiently, would benefit both tenants and rental property owners. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you again for the opportunity to testify today, and we look forward to working with Chair Howard, with you, and with the members of the committee as the bill moves forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next up is Anya McDonald, and then following will be Elliot Boutet from the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, uh, Chair Gbaje, Chair Howard, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Anya McDonald, and I represent Metro Cities, um, and we represent cities in the seven-county metropolitan area at the executive and legislative branches. Uh, Metro Cities appreciates the chair, uh, the work of Chair Howard on House File 2335 as amended. Um, this bill includes important funding for state programs that provide vital resources across the region and the state. Thank you for your inclusion of funding for the Challenge Program, Housing Infrastructure Bonds, uh, Local Housing Trust Funds, Down Payment Assistance, and Rental Assistance, among other provisions. Uh, Metro Cities also supports the housing aid for local governments in the bill and the flexibility to allow cities to transfer housing aid into a local housing trust fund. Uh, Metro Cities is concerned about language that creates a metropolitan regional sales tax for the purpose of funding housing needs. Metro Cities has long supported adequate state revenues for state programs that are workforces in providing support for housing needs, but are often oversubscribed. State programs serve state goals and objectives, and as such should be financed with state revenue sources. Additionally, Metro Cities opposes substituting traditionally state-funded programs with funding mechanisms that would dispar disparately affect taxpayers in the metropolitan region. I want to thank Chair Howard for meeting with us to discuss this language, and we look forward to working with the committee as this bill moves forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next up is Elliot Boutte, and following will be Melissa Taphorn uh, from Minnesota NARO. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Chair Baje and members. Uh, my name is Elliot Butai. I'm the Senior Policy Coordinator at NAMI Minnesota. Uh, we want to thank you for the inclusion of House File uh, 1696 in this bill, which increases funding for the Bridges Rental Assistance <coughs> Program, uh, which uh, is for people with mental illnesses who are waiting for a Section 8 voucher. It also includes some funding for landlord risk mitigation funds. Um, uh, providers around the state build relationships with landlords and help coordinate housing for clients. And these funds can go a long way to incentivize landlords to rent to people knowing that they'll be made whole if anything happens. Um, and the, provi the providers also maintain the relationships with the landlord so there's a point person for any issues uh, while they're also giving services to the residents like case management. So um, we hope to see uh, you know, ongoing support for those kinds of programs. Um, we also support other of the substantial investments in the bill for the family homeless prevention, um, statewide rental assistance, supportive housing, and the bonding funds for infrastructure. Um, everyone deserves a safe place to live, period. When we don't have stable housing, we don't have good mental health. And for people who live every day with mental illnesses, housing is absolutely critical for recovery. So we thank you for your hard work in this committee this year, and we urge your support of the bill. Thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, next up is Melissa Taphorn, and following will be Virginia Brown.
Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon. My name is Melissa Taphorn. I am the executive director at the Washington County CDA. I apologize, I'm losing my voice. Um, but I'm also the legislative chair for the Minnesota chapter of the National Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials. And we represent over 150 housing authorities across the state of Minnesota. Uh, Representative Howard, Vice Chair Abande, and Ranking Member Johnson. On behalf of Minnesota NARO, I support and applaud your efforts to put together this housing omnibus, omnibus bill. It um, provides a lot of robust uh, resources to really um, address the full spectrum of housing needs across this entire state. Um, local housing authorities have been doing this work for 75 years. Uh, we've built public housing, we've partnered with landlords to provide rental assistance to our seniors, to our veterans, to our families with children, and keep them stably housed. We've coordinated locally to address our community and economic and business needs. We've acted as local administrators of state-funded housing programs, and we've committed our levies to leverage state appropriations to maximize the number of affordable rentals created and to expand ex access to low interest mortgages and down payment assistance for first time and first generation home buyers. While we support the bill, uh, Minnesota NARO members are disappointed that the HRA levy rate increase and the addition of workforce housing to our eligible projects um, that was in House File 743 did not make the cut. We will miss out on the opportunity to have our local communities add additional resources to make the state investments go further. So we hope there will be continued conversation about that. Um, but thank you so much for finding a creative way to include statewide um, tenant-based rental assistance. Um, it's a solution that works and it works well. You've heard testimonials on the social and personal impacts of this program, um, but there are other benefits to the program as well. Tenant-based rental assistance is one of the most cost-effective ways to making rent affordable to our working families and, and seniors. <coughs> Housing authorities um, know that this committee is interested in seeing this program run efficiently and soundly. Um, we have policies, procedures, and trained <coughs> staff to put this program and these funds to quick use. Uh, the 60 Minnesota Housing Authorities who currently administer this program, uh, the federal program, are among the best administrators in the county, or country, sorry, are repeatedly earning the rating of high performer. Housing authorities work closely with participants to ensure they are eligible and are adhering to the program rules. We also work closely with landlords and property managers to ensure they are adhering to our program rules and that their units are habitable. We have established strong relationships with some really fantastic landlords. Some companies have large portfolios and others are individuals just renting out the second, you know, the other side of their duplex. If you could um, conclude so your testimony. Thank you so much for the opportunity to um, uh, voice our support of this bill. Thank you so much. Uh, next up we have Virginia Brown from Aon and then following will be Rond Rhonda Audison uh, from the Minnesota Coalition for the Homeless. Thank you, Chair Agbaje, um, Howard. Uh, my name is Virginia Brown. I'm the Chief Transformation Officer at Aon. I'm here to, first off, thank you for this historic investment in housing, especially your commitment to community stabilization for naturally occurring affordable housing, or NOAA funds. This session has been filled with voices about a need for all of the above strategy, where many tools, some tried and true and some are new, are needed to address our state's housing needs. I believe very strongly that this bill brings us the needed tools <clears throat> to deliver housing needs at all levels. This first time funding for preserving and rehabilitating our existing affordable housing is really exciting. We're talking about homes like those at Huntington Place Apartments, where one property has a resident count larger than 70% of Minnesota cities, and those homes have been historically undercapitalized and neglected. I also want to congratulate you and the committee for taking time to listen to the residents many from Aon who sat before you to share their very personal stories of how finding an affordable home made a critical difference in their lives. I believe very strongly that this bill will make a great deal of progress in improving the lives of Minnesotans. Lastly, I'd like to add that while this bill represents historic investments in housing that we all celebrate, we know that much of it is one-time funding, and of course we still need to do more. We need to support residents and stabilize those like Aon doing the extremely difficult work of developing and managing affordable housing by fully funding the SHARE proposal. We need to find more permanent funding sources. We need to keep the supply of housing at all levels moving ahead. And we need to continue to be nimble and innovate, finding new ways to preserve and build more housing of all types. 
until housing receives a share of funding comparable to its, to its impact on Minnesotans' lives, we will continue to face challenges. Families who struggle to find a home they can afford or to pay for housing as well as their other needs deserve your attention and your additional investments in the future. On behalf of Aon, the NOAA Coalition, and myself, I look forward to our continued partnership. Thank you again for your hard work this session and your commitment to help helping so many come home. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next is Rhonda Otteson, and then uh, on deck will be Tom Brace from the Minnesota Chapter National Fire Sprinkler Association. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Vice Chair Agbaje. Thank you, Chair Howard and members of the committee. My name is Rhonda Otteson, Executive <coughs> Director of the Minnesota Coalition for the Homeless, and I live in Wilmer. We are a statewide organization of over 70 members across the state, and we have deep partnerships uh, with people who have lived experience of homelessness and housing instability. <clears throat> I want to applaud the investments across the continuum that this budget represents. Um, as part of the Homes for All Coalition, we know that we need investments across the full continuum in order to move Minnesota forward, so thank you for that. Three priorities I want to lift up that are on the MCH agenda. There's a lot of other great uh, pieces of information in this bill, but three that I want to lift up that have been on our agenda since the beginning of the session. First of all, it would be um, cash um, and housing infrastructure bonds to build um, affordable homes. We need homes uh, for people. That's why 20,000 people tonight, children, families, adults, veterans, seniors in our community don't have a permanent home. And so we need to make those investments and continue to push that um, until we have enough homes for everyone. Um, and then the two key, uh, other areas I want to lift up are first, the Family Homeless Prevention Assistance Program. This program has been a severely oversubscribed for a really long time, and the infusion of resources into this uh, program is really going to make a difference. Um, one of the key parts of the Family Homeless Prevention Assistance Program is that it can have provide rental assistance and that supportive case management for up to 24 months but it's really been limited in its ability to do that simply because of the low funding amount. So again, thank you uh, for investing deeply in that. And secondly, establishing the Landlord Risk Mitigation Fund. Um, Elliot talked about, from NAMI, talked about how this, uh, this program literally opens doors to people with challenging backgrounds, people with evictions, a criminal history, um, or other challenges in their life, and so, that program pairs so well with some of the other programs um, invested in this budget to open doors for people to go home. So finally, as a person who experienced homelessness as a child, um, moving over 13 times and um, really experiencing severe housing instability in my life, um, I wanna express my deep appreciation for both addressing the immediate crisis that we have, um, folks who are experiencing homelessness, and then also thinking long term. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next, we have Tom Brace, and then following will be Marcus Schmidt from the Hearth Connection. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Madam Chair, members, Representative Howard, my name is Tom Brace. I'm the former Minnesota State Fire Marshal from 87 to 2003, and prior to that, I was the Washington State Fire Marshal for 10 years. I'll be brief. I want to thank you for including the High Rise Sprinkler Grant Program. The first incentive program in Minnesota for retrofitting high rise residential buildings with sprinkler systems to improve fire safety to the residents of high rises and also to the firefighters who respond. As brevity is the essence of wit, I thank you all and appreciate your support. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next we have Marcus Schmidt and following will be Andrew Orth from RS Eden. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed. 
Good afternoon, Chair uh, Agbaje, uh, Chair Howard, committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to share testimony on the legislation before you today. My name is Marcus Schmidt, and I'm fortunate to lead Hearth Connection, an organization uniquely positioned between government, direct service providers, and community stakeholders across the state. Our focus at Hearth Connection is supportive housing, where we connect direct service provider partners with resources to serve people with long histories of homelessness, advocate for impactful policy and systems change, and simplify fragmented supportive housing systems and resources. For us and our 30 partners across the state, housing, that is supportive housing, is both a noun and a verb. You need the affordable, safe place for people to live, and you also need the support to help people find it and keep it, with services that help improve people's well-being and stability. We know there is urgency in our communities, rural, suburban, and metro, to provide long-term solutions for people with long histories of homelessness. Supportive housing is a proven long-term solution for breaking the cycle of homelessness. It's been tested in Minnesota and across the country. Simply put, supportive housing works. Hearth Connection, with funding from UCARE, asked the Wilder Research Team to learn more about the barriers and challenges that make it difficult for people experiencing homelessness to get to those long-term solutions. We look forward to sharing their report soon, but here's a sneak peek. Supportive housing is the number one high impact solution to homelessness recommended by nearly 250 direct service providers across our state. Governor Walz's budget identifies $40 million for strengthening <coughs> supportive housing in Minnesota. We're thrilled about the impact of this investment and the stability it would bring to supportive housing. It will help align funding and fill a gap that has undermined supportive housing projects across the state for far too long. Our legislature, this committee, is on the brink of achieving transformational investment across the housing continuum. And we're looking forward to working with you in the weeks ahead to seize the opportunity before us. Chair Akbaje, Chair Howard, committee members, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this testimony, and thank you so much for your public service. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Andrew Orth, and then following will be Greta Getz from Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity. Welcome to the committee. Please introduce Thank yourself you. and proceed with your testimony. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Thanks for having me. My name is Isaiah Sansfield. I am a director with RS Eden. I'm sitting in for Andrew Orth right now. <clears throat> um, so I'm here to offer our support with RS Eden for strengthening the support of housing model. Um, I can just basically talk about what I know. Um, so I oversee front desks, and with the front desks in our housing um, system, we tend to see a lot of need, um, from mental health to treatment needs to whatnot, and we constantly, um, you know, like the dynamic of how much we can actually help the people that come through, it, it's irreplaceable. Um, and I think as much as we can, we need to invest in our population because if we don't, they end up in worse situations than they already are, which tends to affect our communities um, as well as the individuals themselves. So anything that we can continue to do with the hard work that we do, we will continue to support <coughs> and whatever we can. So please um, push forward this bill. Thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, next is Greta Getz, and uh, following will be Julie Guggen from Minnesota Home Ownership Center. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Chair Bajje and Chair Howard. My name is Greta Gates, and I am the Director of Government Affairs at Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity. Twin Cities Habitat is pleased to see meaningful investments in affordable home ownership included in House File 2335. We are particularly grateful to see resources included for two priorities, the Homeownership Education, Counseling and Training, or HECAP program, and the First Generation Home Buyers Down Payment Assistance Fund. Increased resources for HECAP will expand capacity to support much needed financial coaching, pre-purchase counseling, and home buyer education that prepares families for successful homeownership throughout the state. Thank you to Representative Kozlowski for your leadership in sponsoring this bill. 
In addition, we are thrilled to see the Down Payment Assistance Fund for First Generation Home Buyers included in this bill. This new approach represents a key investment in DPA that is strategically targeted to first generation home buyers who do not have access to generational wealth. Furthermore, the community based approach to implementation through CDFIs ensures that the program will be more easily accessible to consumers. Thank you, Representative Igbaje, for authoring this important legislation, supported by a diverse coalition of community stakeholders, and for being a champion for increasing access to affordable home ownership. We are thankful for the committee's attention to these programs and your focus on housing solutions that work together to reduce the racial home ownership gap. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony, Ms. Gates. Uh, next, and I, our final testifier on the list is Julie Guggen. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed. Thank you. My name is Julie Guggen. I'm the president and CEO of the Minnesota Home Ownership Center. Chair Baje, Chair Howard, thank you. And members of the committee, thank you for um, allowing me the opportunity to speak. The center is a nonprofit intermediary leading and convening stakeholders on policy and programming for affordable ownership. We believe that owning a home is the foundation for personal and community <clears throat> success. We applaud the housing investments outlined in House File 2335. Two home ownership topics are particularly important for addressing the racial home ownership gap in Minnesota. Number one, additional investments in HECAT, home ownership education, counseling, and training, will allow our community based partner organizations around the state to empower more households to achieve successful, sustainable home ownership for their families, ensure the delivery of culturally informed practices, and support targeted outreach to BIPOC communities. <clears throat> Second, the first generation down payment assistance program developed in coalition with diverse industry stakeholders and community members and delivered by trusted community-based organizations, the first gen program would bring critical, meaningful support statewide to those who have been historically left out of home ownership. We thank representatives Kozlowski and Igbaje for their leadership of these important initiatives and for your work on this important topic. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. I will check to see if there are any members of the public wishing to testify. Oh, we have one, sir. When you can't pull them forward, go side. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the committee. Please you. state your name for the record Hi, and proceed. My name is Mark Hughes, and I'm just a familiar face. Uh, being raised in, in the construction, home building, and commercial building business, I think this afternoon the picture's been pretty well spelled out in that when we have supported housing, we try to eliminate homelessness, which I think is a goal. When you have supported housing, maybe people turn the equation around and go to try and find either part-time or full-time employment to get a start. And it builds from there. So I think today we've taken the first step and a pretty good foundation now as to where we can get the funding to support everything. I hope we can. But in this session, I've been told we're not going to get everything we want. But remember, there are two things that are being invested. I need, I need not tell anyone you're here. You're all smarter than I am. First is your home investment, and then probably your car, because we all need a couple of those. But uh, again, I think also it, it equates to economics within where you live, that when we're buying things, the stronger our economy gets. And so I hope you will all take a good look at this bill. I know there's a cost to it, and I'm as cheap as they make them, so, uh, but take a good look at it uh, for the betterment of the people of Twin Cities and for the betterment of the people of Thank you so much for your testimony. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so it looks like our plan is to do markup and member discussion tomorrow afternoon. Chair Howard, I don't know if you want to do your closing comments today or tomorrow. <coughs> Chair, I, I, I'll just make a few brief comments and then look forward to the discussion tomorrow. And the main thing I want to do is just to add a few more thank yous. Um, I, I want to thank every Minnesotan that came to our committee this year to testify because 
your stories inform this work and it's why we have this bill before us. I want to thank Homes for All and all of the housing advocates and organizations um, that testified today but have really been working for years to bring us to this point to make a transformational housing investment. We would not have a bill like this before us if not for many of the people in this room, many of the people not in this room that have worked um, to, to ratchet up the priority of housing for years and years. Um, and including past housing champions like our previous chair, Alice Hausman. Um, again, I, I sort of feel like a custodian of, of some of this work that we're hopefully going to get across the finish line that past leaders have worked uh, so hard to get us to this point. So I, I feel an immense amount of gratitude about the amount of uh, people in our community and our state uh, that have helped bring us to this point to make a transformational housing investment. Uh, it's an exciting day and I look forward to an exciting day tomorrow with more discussion on the bill. Thank you so much, Chair Howard. Thank you, members. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll have continue with member discussion and uh, with amendments. So with that, we are adjourned.